All right, guys and girls, welcome to another episode of Astral Auto Repairs. <laughs> Can you dig it? All right, check it out. Behind me, I got a 2001 Lincoln LS. What we're gonna be doing is replacing the fuel pump. Now, we're gonna be replacing the main fuel pump. This vehicle has two fuel pumps, a jet and a main. And during this video, I'm gonna explain to you why it has that, all right? Coming up on Astral Auto Repairs. This channel is a member of the Astral Stars, which means we have a zero tolerance policy against the harassment of others. Anybody who violates that policy will be banned. For further information, please visit www.theastralstars.com. All right, guys, the first thing you want to do is open up both back doors to the vehicle because we're going to be removing the back seat. The next thing you want to do to make it easy for you, go to the each, both front seats and move both front seats up as far as it'll go. So we're going to do that and then we'll be right back. Alright guys, the next thing is very, very important because you do not want to cause a fire. Disconnect the negative terminal. So, the battery is located in the trunk. Yeah, yeah, we got it. What'd you say? What'd you say, Beverly? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, first thing we're going to do is remove the speaker. And then you're going to have an access panel right here. You want to make sure everything is out of the way of the panel, pick it up, and this thing got a little latch on it, now check this out guys, this is Lincoln, was cool, this little latch right here, you pick it up, and you can hook it up right to, the, right to the lip right there, and it stays up, but you gotta make sure there's nothing else in this way, like this stuff right here, well, especially the jack, cause the jack is kinda heavy, is in the way, there we go, alright, here's our battery over here, now, we have a terminal right here. It looks like a 10 millimeter nut. Now, you, know, you don't want to disconnect the positive side. Definitely want to go with the ground. So, let me get a tool over here. All right. So, I'm going to use a 10 millimeter deep quarter inch drive. And it could be a... Looks like looks like it's an actual... Actually, it's a 3 8 but the 10 will work. And you don't want to remove it. That's all you want to do is loosen it up. All right, loosen it up, twist it, take it off. Now just don't lean it up to the side just like this because it is possible that it can snap back, spring back into action and connect. So you wanna make sure you tuck that down to the side so you do not have to worry about that. All right, let's get up there to remove the seat. We'll be right back. All right guys, now we're on the back seat. The first thing you wanna do is go to the front of the back seat on each side. Pick up the cushion just a little bit. You can see a black little lever there. On each side, you want to push that lever towards the outside, towards the door on that side. So one, and that's going to release it. And then over here, pick it up, you're going to have another one. Okay, this one's going toward that side also. Pick it up. And you want to work the seat out. And you got to disconnect the seat belts on this to get this out of here. This thing disconnect right here. Huh. Check that out. You know what guys? Let me get this one over here for a second. Work this better. Okay, that's one. Let me figure out how, guys, I'm gonna release this. And I'll be right back. All right, guys, check this out. This is weird. I had to get a, a paper clip, and on the end of this connector right here, there's a little pinhole. So what you gotta do is push that in there, and there's gonna be a little tension on that, like you're pushing down on a spring or something. Push down, release. That's pretty cool. All right. This, How did you come up with that? I thought of it. Uh, is that right? That's right. <laughs> Indeed. All right. Let's Just take the like seat. It's like a boss. It's all the credit. 
Okay, we're gonna take the seat out. And what we're gonna do is put the seat so it don't get dirty. Enough. Put the seat on the roof of the vehicle, but with this side on the roof so you don't scratch nothing up. All right, let's get back up in there. Now, you got this whole sound dampening material right here. And over here, you're gonna have your main fuel pump. And over here, you're gonna have your jet fuel pump. And I'll explain to that, explain you that in a few minutes. First thing I'm gonna do is go in here. And you gotta work this up. Pull it back. And then you're gonna have two rubber covers. Sometimes you can get in there and get up under there with your fingers and take it out. Sometimes you might have to get a flat screwdriver and pry it up. And it looks like we're gonna go with the screwdriver idea. So let me go get a screwdriver and I'll be right back. All right guys, because the way the Lincoln LS is made, in the center of the car, we're gonna have the drive shaft and there's a, the bottom floor, then the floor goes up, over, and then back. Now we're looking at this like we're looking either from the back of the car or the front of the car. And right in the center here, you're gonna have the drive shaft. So let's go over here and show you what I'm talking about. That the hump right there in the middle of the floor, the drive shaft is running right through that. Now, because the way they designed that like that, they're like, okay, how the heck are we gonna put a gas tank in here? They can't put a gas tank on one side because there'll be only like 10 gallons in there. So they needed to get a, ga a fuel tank to cover both sides of the vehicle. Now what happened because of that hump right there? So what happens is you have the fuel tank built like this. Then you got gas going over this side and gas going over this side. So how the heck is this gas over here gonna get over here? Now let's see if this is the this is the main, and this is the jet. Now on this, you have two fuel senders. Now fuel senders is a sender to let the computer know how much gas is in the car, and then the computer puts that on a gas gauge to let you know how much gas is in the car. So you have a sender over here, and a sender over here. Now the job of the jet pump is to pump fuel from over here to over here, where the main fuel pump pumps the fuel from here up to the engine. That's exactly what the jet pump does. If the jet pump fails, what's gonna happen? You're gonna get a bunch of fuel over here, and then you go, this pump is gonna be working, but as soon as this gets empty, the car is gonna shut off and not stop, and you're still gonna have a bunch of gas over here. That's one way. The other way, if this one goes bad, of course, you know the car just ain't gonna start. So, what we're gonna be replacing is this one over here, the main one. Any questions? So the, where does the drive shaft go? The drive shaft is right here. Oh, okay. So the tank is over the drive shaft. Right. Okay, okay. All right, we got our screwdriver. Let's go over here and pop that cover off. We'll be right back. All right, we got our flat screwdriver. Go around here, pop this cover up. Yeah, these, these, these covers are kind of difficult, especially when it's cold out. When it's hot out, you can take it up with no problem. But when it's cold out, these are not going to come up here. There we go. All right, and here's our main pump. The first thing we're going to do is disconnect our electrical connector. Got our connector right here. There's a little tab right there. You want to push that tab towards the connector and unplug it. Just move that out of the way. Now, if you can see right over here, on this side, it's like a clamp holding on to the fuel line. No, let me get on the other side. Okay. All right, so that's all we have to do. Just carefully pop that out, bring that to the side. And we're gonna just gonna tuck that over so we don't have to worry about it. All right. Now, luckily, here's your two fuel lines. You return 
drawer and return. Now there, notice they're color coded, red and white, so you can't get those confused. Even if you did, one is not gonna fit on the other one. All right, so let me get a pair of needle nose and we're gonna be removing these lines. Be right back. All right, guys, next thing we'll do, get you some rags, cause you might get a little fuel spilling out there. So I just wanna get it covered up. I wanna make sure I get the rags in there so it's not in your way from seeing. Now, removing these fuel lines is very simple. Two ways of doing it. One, you can use your fingers, or two, get you a pair of hose pliers or regular pliers. Each side of this fuel line, you're gonna see a tab. A little tab right there, that's one. And then on the other side too. And what you gotta do is squeeze those tabs in, and once you squeeze them in, you pick the fuel line up. Let me see if I can get in there with my fingers. Yeah, not really. So, I use the hose pliers. Carefully grab it, the two tabs. Squeeze the tabs in. And pick your fuel line up, just like that. Same thing with the other side. This one's a little bit difficult to get to. And got that one out. Move those over to the side. That one is going to be a little problem. So, let me see how far we got to go up on that one. No, we're, we're about right there too. This one is gonna, this one little thing is gonna give me a problem. Unbelievable. Unreal. Okay. So without dropping the gas tank, we're gonna have to figure this out. Because we are not gonna sit here and drop no gas tank to get this one line out. And especially being that I am so close to that. Whew, that was close. So guys, you saw, the, you saw what I did here. And you gotta actually really pick up on that. And we got that one disconnected. Move that to the side. Now, if you look at Mitchell or any kind of online manual, whatever it is, they're going to tell you to get a special wrench to take this ring off. You do not have to use a special wrench to take that off. And I'm going to show you. What you are going to need, though, is not a regular screwdriver. You're going to need a screwdriver with a flat screwdriver with a, a wide handle because you're going to tap the edges and loosen this ring up. I'm going to show you what I mean as soon as we come back. All right. What I'm using is a pry bar because it's got a wide handle to it. And what you want to do is set the pry bar right on one of the edges right there. Get you a hammer. And slowly tap it as you can see. And do not hit this hard guys. I mean, it's plastic. So take your time. And just keep turning it around. All right, we're gonna keep doing this and we'll be right back. Okay, I turned it enough. Let me get it, make sure I get my lines out of the way. Where I can now take my hand and twist it. And you notice that what I'm doing here is that every time I turn it a little bit, I'm making sure our fuel lines are out of the way. Definitely be careful with your fuel lines because these fuel lines are plastic. I like the old cars with metal lines. These are plastic fuel lines.
Alright, there we go. Let's get our ring off of there. Put that to the side. And here is our fuel pump module located. You know what? Let me get a light. Because that thing is way down in there. Alright guys, we'll be right back. Alright guys, what we're gonna do now, okay, let's get us a pair of wire snips. You see these tie straps right there? We're gonna cut those off. This one and this one up here. Now cutting these off, what you wanna do is hold on to it. Put the snips along the edge like that. And cut it off. Taking every precaution not to cut into any wires. All right, now the one down there is gonna be a little bit more difficult to get to. Actually, we're gonna slide this, see if we can slide this up here. Because our plan is to leave the fuel sender down in the vehicle. This one's not a whole assembly, it's just the pump. Yep, just the pump. So we gotta take it apart and disassemble it. Let me bring it up a little bit more. Now, what you don't see, what I'm doing right here, I'm taking this and I'm twisting the tie strap and at the same time bringing it further up so I can get to it. Okay, and you also notice I have one hand holding on to it so it doesn't drop into the tank. All right, now that we got that separated, what we do now is, if you can see down into the tank on each side, there's gonna be a tab right there and the other ones over that side. On each side, you're gonna squeeze those tabs in. You can do one at a time and that's gonna release the module from the assembly itself. So, what I'm gonna do is, I don't know King, if you can see what I'm doing. Well, so, yeah, yeah, I can see it. Should I, should I use a screwdriver so you can see exactly? No, we saw the tabs. All right, so, I, this tab right here, I pushed it in towards the pump, and it released one side, and then I'm gonna go to the other side, and pop that up. Now, our fuel pump is, Released. Oh, cool. This is coming all the other. Now what you're gonna have to do is get you a drain pan. <laughs> Some kind of pan because once you pick this up, there's gonna be gas everywhere. And I don't know why I didn't get the pan when I was just there. So I'm gonna show you how it comes up. Just like that. Carefully pick the whole module up. And also, guys, pay attention to how it's coming out so you don't put it all twisted when you're going back in. All right, so let me go get a pan, and I'll be right back. All right, here we go. Got our pan right here, and got some rags to put down. All right, let's slowly pick our assembly up. Now you gotta be careful of the sender because the sender, the arm, goes down and it turns. So if you go pick it right back up, you're gonna bend that arm. So as you can see, I'm coming at an angle right here. And there we go, there's our pump. Look at that sock, wow. All right guys, let's take this outside so we can put the new pump on it. And which we got right here and we'll be right back. All right guys, let's uh, look at this. Look at this dirt from there. Look at, look at the dirt dropping from there, how dirty that is. Wow. So, definitely a good idea to change that. Yeah, the customer did not get one, but, but she went to the uh, parts, she went to O'Reilly's to get one now. And I'm just draining this gas out because I want it just so you guys can see this better and set it up out here. Now, the next thing we're going to do is go to the side. We got one, two, three, three sixteenths screws we need to take out. And I'm using a three sixteenths uh, quarter inch drive socket. 
get an extension so I can be way up here. And you want to make sure you put these on because these things are little. So let's get these three out and we'll be right back. All right, guys, before we pull the cover up, what we're going to do is unplug our fuel pump. So what you need is a small, flat screwdriver or something really small to go right inside that little groove right there. Because there's a little tab in there. you got to push that in and then unplug it. Just like that. Great. Okay. Now, you carefully pick our fuel pump up. Put that to the side. And look at this thing got two socks. What? So Wait this a minute. one didn't come with it either? And this one didn't come with nothing. And look at all this dirt inside of there too. So what we're gonna do. I am going to get you guys should pay attention to how it's set in there. I am going to get a carburetor cleaner and we're going to clean this out. All right, set this down and we'll be right back. All right, guys, the customer went to the store to get the strainer. Which strainer they give her, I have no idea. Now, this one can, if anything, this one can be reused because it's inside, but this one has to be changed. And I really don't think, I hope they give her that one. All right, let's go over here and. Inside here. Can you clean the um, strainer? Can, as much as you can, you can spray it a little bit, like I'm doing like this. Mm -hmm. But uh, guys, sometimes it's best just to get the whole assembly. All right, now we got that situated. Now we got to go over here, and she bought a precision fuel pump, and it looks like. Switch. Huh? Yeah. It looks like it came with a few things. Good. Still ain't gonna work. All right. So this, what they want us to do here, is use this fuel pump. Use this wiring harness. To connect it to there and then connect it to the harness up here. Why didn't they just make the right plug? I have no idea. So what we gotta do right now is remove this strainer. We're gonna get us a little screwdriver here. I'm just gonna carefully go side to side and work that right off. Pop right off. That's it. Now this one's got a little grommet here to hold it down this one I have no idea what the heck they got here they got like two different things and no this is gonna fit right there let's take this off boy sometimes man this is all right, now we got to figure out what they want us to do. First, let's... No, we wouldn't be able to put that on. If I put that on, then put that on, and then put that on, it can't go like that. So either way I look at it, this is not going on. So we got that situated. You know what, why don't we just, to make this easier for us, why don't we take this one off, and put it up there. Pop this on. Done. Now we're not gonna put all this back together yet. We're gonna wait till she come back so we can see what uh, strainer she has. We'll be right back. Oh, you recording? You said ready. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, I said I didn't hear no beep. I didn't hear the beep. Well, pay attention. <laughs> you know. All right, guys. The customer came back. She got both of them. That is great. So we can just pop this one right back off. Can you? Sure. Yeah. 
You used a screwdriver last time. I don't need a screwdriver this time, Sylvia. Okay, Timothy. All right, let's get our new one and set it on here. And this one, you notice that little little snap ring right there. I'm surprised this one didn't have one, probably because it's set to the bottom of the tank, bottom of the uh, unit. So this goes on just like this. And you're gonna make sure that it's pushed on tight. And if you try to look in there, try to make sure it's, it's flush down there with the pump. Great. And this one, you can't even, there's no lip, nothing to put that on. So this is probably for another vehicle and all. So the next thing we're gonna do is let's set this back down in there. setting this thing right? I think it might be that that thing because see this one's long. Uh, Alright so this is going this is going to be folded in a little bit and fit that down in there and there we go right down there just like that. Sun is messing with you. See it a little bit yeah we can see it. Alright so we got that part on. Now we're gonna bring our assembly, the top cover, back over, and inside there, th that ring right there, that's gonna go over this part of the fuel pump. So we're gonna bring it down, and it's right there. We're gonna make sure that it's on top of that. What about those wires right there? These? Yeah, I mean this that one right there looks like it's gonna get Oh that's changed. gonna be on the outside. Oh. Yeah, that's how it goes. Alright, so it is down. The next thing we're gonna do is get our three little three sixteenth screws and we're gonna bolt this back down. Now guys, this is very important. Tighten these screws down, you will strip them out if you over tighten them. You just bring it down. Usually when I tell you guys, I said bring it down until it stops and then a little bit more. Nope, not this time. This time you're going to bring it down until it stops and that's it. <laughs> so, and if it's better to use a nut driver. I'm not even going to use my ratchet on this. So I'm going to bring it down until it stops. That's all you got to do. All right, so let's tighten these up and we'll be right back. All right, guys, the next thing we do is we change this one down here, the important one. This one sucks. So what we're going to do here is turn it over. Grab our flat screwdriver, and what you want to do here is just pick that up. Just get in there. Got no light. Okay. Just pick that up, just a little bit. That's it. Do not pop that off. Just a little bit, because then you got to go over this side. That's holding it on right there. A little arrow clip. So what you got to do is get some needle nose or a pair of pliers. Squeeze that tab in. And I don't know if you know if you guys are going to. Guys, let me get, I was able to see right where you were. Okay, we're going to go in there. Squeeze that tab in. And then continue popping popping this up. Matter of fact, let me get off. Uh, I'm going to go from this side. I'm going to get the screwdriver in there like that. And then I'm going to... Just like that. So I had the screwdriver up under there and prying up on it just a little bit while my pliers squeezed the tap. In fact, let me show you. Sorry. Oh, now we're gonna show them that right oh. there. So now let's get our new one. And that's all we're gonna do is push it on there. And make sure See then that right there is not pushed down all the way. So what I'm gonna have to do is hold it right here, take my hand, and push that down until and as you can see I got one in that side over there, it snapped out. Now I have to get push it down to get that side right there, the part of that arrow.
clean it out like that. You don't want to push this up against nothing because it's all plastic. And there we go. Okay. All right. Now, for the next step, this thing is messed up right here, man. Now, for the next step, inside the fuel pump, with the fuel pump, you know, before we do that, guys, let's go over here. See this ring, the gasket? Take that gasket up. And take it off. Let's get our new one. And set our new one. That is very important. Make sure you use the new gasket that's inside of there. And just put it around the top and make sure it's flat all the way around. Because if you don't change the gasket, there's a good chance that you will have a fuel leak. All right, that's done. Next part, with the new fuel. Where is it? Where's that harness at? Over here. Oh. With the new fuel pump, they're going to give you a little bit of harness, a little small harness. This is the precision pump because the pump, the connector on this pump, is different from the original. So what you got to do is you got to use this harness they gave you. Plug up the new fuel pump. So it snaps into place and this end is actually going to go right here and plug up to the harness of the module. That is done. Now we can go in here and we're going to set the whole module back into the tank. We'll be right back. Alright guys, now we're about to set our module back in. I want to pay attention to how this is. If you look at the side of the module over here, you're going to see there's an opening. Right up there, oh, stop sticking my fingers down there, playing with the gas. That's where your strain is going to go through. Yeah. Oh, okay. And if you look on each side, you're going to see two little openings at the top. Yeah. Those where the, when we squeeze those tabs together, those are going to lock right into into place right there. So there is your alignment. So let's get this light out here. And what we're gonna do here is also, let me, before we forget, you see the opening right there? Yeah. That's where your sender is gonna set down into. So what we gotta do is set it in like this. I'll bring it down into the tank. And now I'm, I'm twisting it this way to get the uh, strainer up under that housing. And now I'm going to start lowering the assembly down. I know it's hard for you to see it. Cause... That's, what, that's why I meant you say drain the gas. <laughs> and you be able to see it. down in there. Now, only thing I have to do is push down and now it can still turn back and forth just a little bit. And now what I'm looking for now is I'm list trying to listen for like a click so I know those tabs will lock that assembly into place. There's one and I, I actually saw that one move. So now I gotta go to this side and I just heard that one lock in. Great. That is perfect. Everything is Good. Yeah, buddy. You got that one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, the next thing we're going to do 
is lower down the top cover. Now, I should have showed you this when it was up there, but it's okay. If you look on the outside of this ring, you're going to see there's a little, a little cutout. Can you see that? Right, yeah. Right yeah. there? Yeah. And now if you feel, if you look right here on your pump, the cover, you're going to see the little cutout right there, a little tab. That's your alignment for this. So, you want to push that down, turn it till it just snapped into place. Look around, everything, make sure everything is even and good. And also, you got an alignment tab right over here also as well. That's a big one. All right, now that we got that down, now for the next part. Our ring. Now you notice before, you see how our fuel lines are over here? So we got to keep those fuel lines out of the way while pushing down on this ring. So we're going to get our ring in there. And you notice right now I'm going counterclockwise because what you want to do is go to counterclockwise a little bit to make sure that the threads are lined up and everything is going even before you go tightening it up. Now see, I can tell right now I'm crooked because I got a lot of room over here and I got hardly any room over here so I know this ring is going down crooked. And once you get it going down a few threads, that's it. It will definitely go down with no problem. Nope, it's still off. Just goes to show you this thing, it's not that easy to get this thing lined up. And I'm going reverse again, so I want to take that back off. Still not. And with those fuel lines, it's not making it any kind of easier. You can see guys this is time consuming but you definitely want to take your time and not bring this thing down there I got this let's get this plug out there and cross thread this you definitely don't want to do that Here we go. It don't give you a lot of room to work. No, they don't. So now you want to tighten this up as much as you can by hand. All right. Now we got it down tight by hand. Now what we're going to do is use our um, pry bar and hammer and go to tighten this up more. Do not over tighten this, <laughs> okay? Believe, trust me, the old ring we got down there, the new one, it is definitely sealing it up right now. I can actually leave it just like this and it will not leak. But you do not want to do that. Especially if you're weak. But then it's going to leak. All right, so let's get our pry bar and we'll be right back. All right, got my pry bar. Set it right there. Pretty much stopped. I 
am not going anymore. I know that's tight. All right, the next thing we want to do is now we got our fuel lines. Remember, this one is the difficult one. So I see right now, we had to do is really pick up on this one to get that set in like that. Push it down, the tab's gonna lock it right into place. Try to take it back up, great. The little one was no problem at all. Line it up, push it down, till it stops, it's gonna lock into place. Pick it up to make sure everything is good. That's great. Last but not least, we got our connector. Bring our connector over. Let's plug it up. And we got this little clip over here that's held onto the fuel, that was holding onto the fuel line. Snap that on just to be sure. And before we go ahead and put our cover and everything on, what we're gonna do is connect the battery, start the vehicle up, and you're gonna make sure just to verify no leaks all around here and everything is good. All right, let's connect this battery and we'll be right back. All right, let's get our negative terminal. Terminal. You want to make sure that's pushed down as far as it would go. And then we're going to go and tighten this up. All right, guys, let's get our key. Let's try it out. We'll be back. All right, guys. If you go to start the car, try to start the car now, the car will not start. You got to prime the fuel pump up, which means you got to cut the key on, put the key in the on position. Huh. It, it didn't sound too like, like. Okay, there it is. Because what you did was initialize the fuel pump, so the fuel pump started pumping, but it only going to come on for a couple seconds. So then you got to cut it off. Do it again. Cut it off, and we're gonna do it. As a matter of fact, when, before I do this again, you're gonna go to the back, and you're gonna listen, and you're gonna hear the fuel pump come on for a few seconds, and then shut off. In the back? Yeah, to the other side. To the other side. <laughs> matter of fact, let me close this door so you can hear them. All right, that's the fuel pump coming on, and then it shut off for a few seconds. One more time. Okay, now I'm gonna try to start it. Yeah, battery's dead. So, what we're gonna have to do is jump it. Let's, we're gonna hook up some jumper cables, and we'll be right back. Okay, we got a car, dang it. Keep getting keys. All right. Try this now. Now with this time, we're gonna actually go ahead and try to start it up. Here we go, guys. It sounds like a power steering pump noise. Maybe we can power steering fluid. Let's try it one more time. Great. All right, what we're gonna do is disconnect the neck, dis disconnect the uh, jumping cables, and we're gonna let the car run for a little bit to charge back up the battery. We'll be right back. All right, car still running. Looking all around, make sure there's no leaks at all anywhere. That is great. Last but not least, we're gonna take our cover, put our cover down, pop it right into place. Oh. We don't need these no more. What is this anyway? Don't need this either. And the next thing we're gonna do is lower our sound deadening machine, uh, machine <laughs> material, tuck it up under the carpet, and then we're gonna get our seat and get ready to put it in. We'll be right back. All right, guys, we got it. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is put our seat in, and we gotta make sure the seat buckles parts is go through the opening of the seats. Put it like this, go up under here, and we're gonna start tucking these up under. Oh 
nuisance of pain. And then we're gonna tuck the seat in. Be right back. All right guys, we got him through. Now we're gonna push our seat all the way back. And last but not least, make sure you see a little metal loop right there. The metal loop's gotta line up going into those plastic. Push it over, snap it down into place. Bring our little connector over, the other part of our seat belt. Lock it into place and we are done. Be right back. All right, so today we had a 2001 Lincoln LS and we showed you how to replace the main fuel pump. And the main fuel pump is on the passenger side. So if you guys have any comments or questions, you can post it below in the comment section or you can email Timmy at tim at astroautorepairs.com. Hope you paid attention. If not, watch it again. This is Sylvia from Astro Auto Repairs. We can't repair it, nobody can. See you next time.